the transgender narcissists. Hello, I'm H.G. Tudor. I have been repeatedly asked by clients, by readers and viewers, to talk about the link between transgenderism and narcissism. There are those individuals who have found that they have a difficulty living with the biological sex of being either a man or a woman. There are those that therefore have sought to lead a life as the opposite biological sex, and these individuals have done so quietly, in some instances experiencing unnecessary prejudice because of their choice. There have been those individuals that have undertaken cosmetic alterations. So, for instance, if they identify as being a woman, they have worn wigs, they've worn makeup, they have perhaps worn clothing, which is associated more with women than men. Others have gone further, undertaking alterations through surgery to change the biological sex that was assigned to them to become a different gender. Those, of course, are choices that an individual, because it is their life, are perfectly entitled to make. However, as of late, we have seen a rise in certain individuals that use the issue of transgenderism as a weapon. I recall not so long ago seeing a court case which involved a man who, wearing a high-vis jacket and ostensibly looking to anybody looking upon him like a man, namely he had masculine features, a beard, and was dressed like a man, who assaulted two women in a railway station public toilet, having accessed the female toilets. When he was arrested, his defence was that actually he identified as being female and that was the reason that he was in the toilet. Of course, this is just a cynical attempt to avoid the suggestion of a premeditated attack by giving him a reason to be in the toilets in the first place. There was nothing about this individual to suggest that he actually behaved in a way that was feminine or that he would be identified as appearing to be female or behaving in a female way. Instead, this was a man who took advantage of a current trend of certain individuals deciding that if they wish to identify as something that they are actually not, everybody else has to accept it. There have been other instances where certain prominent people have been threatened with cancellation, who have been attacked, in some instances physically, as a consequence of expressing their own views with regard to the rise of transgender activists. J.K. Rowling has found herself famously on the receiving end of unjustifiable treatment just because she's expressed her opinion. Naturally, what we see is the hypocrisy of certain individuals that express their opinion that I wish to identify as being female, you must now identify me as being female, you must now address me as either she or perhaps say some other pronoun. However, you are not allowed to advance an opinion in relation to me or with regard to what I am. To do so makes you some kind of hater. The contradictory behaviour is significant. We have also seen instances whereby an individual repeatedly seeks to cause a brouhaha because they have not been addressed by the appropriate pronoun. It is quite simple. If those individuals wish to be known as something else, then they can do so. But they have no entitlement to believing that anybody else should enter into this deluded view that they may have. As mentioned, there are those that have sought to change from one gender to another, and 
They have done so in a quiet fashion. They are genuine in what they are. They wish to be different, but they do not wish to draw huge attention to themselves. But what there has been has been an increase in certain individuals who declare, you must now describe me as this, exhibiting a sense of entitlement. That they say, you are not allowed to call me by this name, but you must call me by this name, even though it doesn't fit with the general understanding of that description. It's a little bit like going along and saying, this orange item here, which is a roughly sort of conical shape and is often eaten by rabbits, is not a carrot, it is a potato. Everybody understands that the item is a carrot, has always been known by a carrot, and has all the characteristics of a carrot. But this individual determines that henceforth this shall be identified as a potato, even though it shares no characteristics of what is universally understood to be a potato. Operating with such a view is deluded. Operating with such a view and seeking to impose that upon other people shows an absence of boundary recognition. Behaving in such a manner shows a lack of accountability for the general understood descriptions which are utilised to enable us to get through life by recognising things through appropriate descriptions, so that when you're talking about requiring something that is orange and conical and beloved by rabbits, that you know that you're talking about a carrot and that you're not given a potato or an onion or a parsnip instead. Things have descriptions and they're universally accepted to aid communication, to aid identification, to aid categorization. These individuals take it upon themselves to drive their views down the throat of others without being asked to do so, demonstrating a sense of entitlement, a lack of emotional empathy for the people that they are addressing, a lack of accountability for the way that they behave. In some instances, their insistence on special treatment is indicative of grandiosity. The convoluted logic that they apply to their circumstances is redolent of magical thinking. And therefore, there is much of the behaviours of some of these individuals, not all, I emphasise, but certain ones, which would actually fit with demonstrating that this isn't actually about being transgender, but this is a narcissist that is behaving in a way to make themselves different or special so that they can use that to assert control over people, that they draw fuel by way of their reactions, that they acquire character traits from other people and bolt them onto a construct, that they seek certain residual benefits. The vitriolic responses that some of these individuals have exhibited when criticised for holding untenable views is demonstrative of heated ignited fury. The sensitivity that they exhibit to being told you're wrong and you're wrong in a logical fashion is also demonstrative of a hypersensitivity to the needs of control. I emphasise this is not applicable to all individuals that are transgender. But many of you watching this video will be able to identify with various instances of people where you were left thinking, I'm looking at a man who has a beard, who's broad-shouldered, who speaks with a deep voice, but he's wearing a dress and he wants me to understand that he's a woman. That doesn't fit with what a woman is. And it strikes me it's not so much about him wanting to be a woman, but rather that he wants to draw attention to himself, that he loves the attention that his transgender status brings, that there are these individuals who are genuinely transgender, but their lives have been made all the difficult by these Johnny and Janie come latelys who have jumped on a bandwagon of transgender activism made plenty of noises, played the victim when criticised, gone running to the police to suggest that they are a victim of a hate crime when somebody attempts to engage them in rational debate. And it's these individuals that have made it problematic for those individuals who genuinely are transgender. 
Naturally, these, if you will, faux transgenders will never accept what they're being told. They will never accept that it's actually about requiring attention, fuel, that they need to control people through this. They can't see it because they're likely to be unaware narcissists. No matter how you explain to them, logically using the evidence, their narcissism as a distortion field will completely reject what you are explaining to them. It will not stack up for them. And they will argue with you until the sun sets that you're wrong, that you're prejudiced, that you are blinkered and bigoted. They will threaten you with legal action. They will perhaps take legal action against you. All done, of course, of the nullification of threat to control for you, expressing your opinion, which you're entitled to do. I have seen the rise of such individuals whereby it isn't to do with being transgender and it's everything to do with their narcissism. In the same way that certain individuals use race as a stick to beat other people and to play the race card, it isn't actually about the issue of race or colour, it's all about the pursuit of the prime aims. They use the issue of colour to control people, to draw fuel, to access character traits and residual benefits. And it seems to me that there is a significant proportion of those that operate within the transgender movement who are not actually about it being transgender, but instead they're narcissists that have come along and utilised the transgender movement as a cover for getting to the prime aims. Not only is this problematic for the genuine activists who are genuine individuals that wish to lead transgendered lives quietly and unassumingly, but it also has resulted in clashes with people just for expressing their views and rather vitriolic attacks upon these individuals. It has resulted in police forces in the United Kingdom engaging in ridiculous wokery in order to pander to the aggressive requirements of these particular activists, again, who hold themselves out as victims when they are not, who utilise the issue of transgenderism in an entirely inappropriate way, hijacking something that is meaningful to a certain section of, the society, of society and purloining it for their own subconscious purposes to assert control over people and draw fuel from them. A simple observation of these behaviours that accord with all of the various narcissistic indicators demonstrates that this is to be the case. But furthermore, this has also been backed up by research. A paper that has been published on the National Library of Medicine, but, uh, written by Azadeh Mazari Maybodi, Ahmad Hajibi and Etafe Gambari Jaffe, tells us about the frequency of personality disorders in patients with gender identity disorder. The background is that comorbid psychiatric disorders affect prognosis, psychosocial adjustment and post-surgery satisfaction in patients with gender identity disorder. 73 patients requesting sex reassignment surgery were recruited for this cross-sectional study. Of the participants, 57.5% were biologically male and 42.5% were biologically female. They were assessed through the Millen Clinical Multiaxial Inventory number 2. Here is the most interesting thing. The results were that the frequency of personality disorders amongst those individuals was 81.4% the most frequent personality disorder was narcissistic personality disorder, 57.1%. There is a table created showing this. Narcissistic personality disorder was the highest at 57.1%, obsessive compulsive at 38.6%, masochistic sadistic at 34.3%, paranoid 25.7%, Antisocial, 22.9. Histrionic, 17.1. You will know from my work in relation to Amber Heard that I would regard 
that histrionic personality disorder is just another flavour of narcissism. Understand that the percentages are greater than 100 because certain individuals presented with more than one personality disorder. It's an interesting paper. I'm not going to take you through all of the detail in relation to it. You can look it up and read it yourself. But the point is this, that it was apparent to me that many of the individuals that identify as transgender aren't actually that, and it's just their narcissism utilising that as a means to get to the prime aims. This is clearly being borne out by this research that has been undertaken by these scientists, which identifies that in regard to more than half of the individuals in the survey, those seeking sex reassignment surgery, and thus identified as transgender, were actually narcissists. This comes as no surprise. Again, I emphasize there are individuals who are genuine about their transgenderism. They are not narcissists. They wish to be different to what they have been born, and they are allowed to do that. But the frequency by which the more vocal individuals who attack people, who berate them for expressing an opinion, who shout them down, who don't listen, who protest, who enforce their views over other individuals, who expect to be allowed to go anywhere and be addressed in a certain way, despite their behaviour not actually fitting with what they're protesting about, has increased and fits the various behaviours associated with narcissism. And that this survey has shown 57.1% of those who were subjected to the research had narcissistic personality disorder, which was the most prevalent personality disorder amongst those transgender individuals. I'm H.G. Tudor. Thank you for listening.